everyone. Welcome. How's everyone doing? Come on. How's everyone doing? Yeah. Does everyone want to learn about families in Revit? Yeah. All right. Very good. That's much better. My name is Marcelo Scambaluri. I'm BIM director at John Martin Associates, structure firm in downtown LA. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about more families in motion. It's going to be really exciting. Today is really like a 2.0 version of a lab that I uh, taught last year called Families in Motion. Families in Motion last year lab. Did anyone attend that lab last year? Okay, so about um, 15%. Okay, very good. So today, like I said, it's an updated version, kind of like a piece of software. So we will be going through some review for all the people who haven't, as well as you're going to see some new things. All right, so I want to get to know everybody here. My presentations are very informal, as you know. Uh, and uh, and uh, I get really excited about this. I'm going to run around up here. Maybe I'll run, up th- run down there, and I'll get so excited, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, I just want to know who I'm talking to. How many people have used Revit to build some type of family that had to move? All right, and that's what this class is all about. If you have a family that needs to move, whether it's translation or rotation, or combinations of or many combinations of them, This class is for you because we're going to be talking about that. And this is going to challenge the real traditional methods that you think about for family modeling. We're going to do adaptive components. We're going to do classic family editor. We're going to do 2D components. We're going to do, uh, we're also going to do um, a lot of different concepts in here. And so I have to warn everyone, this is an advanced class, okay? This is going to be hardcore Revit family modeling concepts, okay? Yeah, all right. So, (laughs) so. This is not for the faint of heart. If, if, you, if you're a little worried about it, I feel free to leave right now. Everyone want to stay? All right. Don't give me a low mark because I said, because uh, it was over your head, because you have all been warned. All right? Okay, very good. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm just, I'm so excited. Oh, my goodness. Anyone, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I also run a blog site, uh, The Revit Complex. I uh, also do a podcast called Simply Complex podcast, so I'm heavily involved with this stuff, and it's, it's, oh, it's really exciting. So let me talk about what we're going to do today. And because everyone here is a Revit modeler, I was talking to a lot of people, really, I'm here because of you. I'm proud of everyone in here. The fact that you're Revit users and you're Revit modelers, you're already awesome. You're already the champions in your office. You're already my heroes, okay? You're welcome. So today, at the end of the class, I'm going to turn you into Revit superheroes. How's that sound? All right? Okay, good. And, and so we've got a lot of interesting stuff to go over. Anyone has a question, just raise your hand. Uh, you don't have to go up to the microphones here. Feel free to uh, call out, you know, the, well, once I call on you, you can uh, ask the question. No problem. Uh, I, I don't mind getting interrupted up here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We've got about... Uh, 53 and a half minutes to do this. Got a lot of material to cover. All right, let's get started. Whew, here we go. I already talked about this. We're going to talk about the Revit software. We're talking about massing, adaptive, traditional family to make a move. All right? We're going to be challenging a lot of the concepts that you've known to actually make families move. And we're going to do some really fun examples today. Uh, the first one will be this one, piece of construction equipment. We're going to be using the massing and adaptive component to do this. And then, <clears throat> then we're going to take those same concepts and we're going to turn them and we're going to use them in the traditional family editor and we're going to do this one. Yeah, classic family editor, all right? All right, that's just two of seven that we're going to do today, so let's just go ahead and get started. Everyone ready to rock and roll? Oh, yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, here we go. So, families in motion. Let's do it. So the first one is this. This is a family. You may think it's complicated, but it's not. This is a a lift to put a person in. You can place them in there, and then it lifts them up. We're going to actually, I'm going to show you how to actually do the mechanics inside of Revit to make, to animate it just like this, to make it move just like this. And what if I told you that this is ridiculously simple to do, and you don't have to nest anything in order to do that, okay? You want to see how you do it? Yeah. Oh, so easy. So easy. Okay. You're like, really? Oh, yeah. 
It so is. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to think about some of this stuff. Um, let's go ahead and start to think about this stuff. And let's start to challenge some of the stuff that we know today. How many people have actually had to build a family where you have a rotation parameter in there? And how many people absolutely love the rotation parameter when it hits zero and 90? And three, okay, right? I don't think I need to demonstrate it to this crowd because you're already, my, you're already my rabbit heroes, but just, right, in concept, it kind of goes like this, right? And then what do you do? You put this here, right? And then, and then this is your rig, so you put stuff there and make it rotate, right? And you set a parameter here, and then you change this to what, zero? Everyone, right? And then, and then you change this back to 45, and then, oh my goodness, look at that. What just happened, right? So you've got these instability issues that you have to deal with. But even that aside, there's even more exciting stuff I'm going to show you. So let's challenge this. But what's even more exciting today, because we're, we're, we're Families in Motion 2.0, is we're also going to challenge the typical way we think of translation parameters. And what do I mean by that? I mean this thing that we know and love for so long. I have never taught this before, and I'm so excited to show this. I want everyone to challenge yourselves on this parameter, okay? Right? You can do this. You can make a parameter like this, right? And you want it to move, you can do like this, right? I want everyone to rethink this. I'm going to show you some methods that you can also use to replace that, to add stability to your families. All right? Like, you're like, Marcelo, what do you mean? All right, let's go ahead and get going, and then uh, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So, everyone keep an open mind as we move forward. All right, here we go. Ready? Ooh, first example. All right, so that first example, you saw that lift. Uh, some of the people who took the lab are, are going to be familiar with this concept. Um, but basically, we want to be able to build a family that's able to flex and move to these particular parameters, right? Now, if you have a family where you only have a door swing open once, okay, fine. Then you just add the rig once and you're done. But what if you have multiple arm movements, right? What if you have a piece of a... Uh, what if you have a uh, TV articulating TV stand, or, or medical lights, or you know, other things like that, or a, or a Hinawa lift like this. These are the things you can use to help you build the rig. Okay, and I'm going to show you. So we are in the massing editor at the moment, an adaptive component editor, all right? So it's really simple. Just think about the way these things work. Instead of using that classic two uh, right angle uh, reference lines and then a line to host it with that angle parameter, well, in the massing environment, what if we just used a circle? And what if we took a point, and then instead of placing it, and then, here we go, center. We placed one at the center, and then we hosted another point onto the line. Well, the developers were good, kind enough, if we put a little spline through point here, and we made that a reference line, the, the de developers were kind enough to give us the ability to host points to lines and able to rotate them like this. Not only that, but the developers were even ha kind enough to give us the ability to turn the parameter into an angle. And you can actually place it at zero. And you can place it at 360. And you can place it at 90, you know, or whatever, okay? So this is the concept we're going to use, all right? Think about that, all right? But also think about this. Every single work point has an additional reference plane on it. We're going to use that. Excuse me. We're going to use that power. So we have a point. We host it. We do a circle rig. We can host something onto that reference circle plane, uh, reference point, and then keep going on and on. All right. So this is how it works. I know I'm moving a little fast, but um, but you'll get the you'll get the idea. All right. Let's do it. Ready? So I'm going to start the first one. I'm going to go ahead and come over here. If you need to build a piece of equipment, go get the cut sheet from the internet or the or the or the, or the uh, manufacturer. They'll be happy to give it to you. So we're going to start the first point here. We've got to follow these rules. Ready? First, we want to set the reference plane on that first point, like that. Then we want to put our first circle there. Now we're going to move it to be big enough to this first rotation point, this first linkature. And why do we do that? Because we want to host a point right there. Now I'm not quite exact, so you know, don't kill me, OK? I mean, you can get more exact when you do this later. Then you can pick these two points, and you can put a line through it. Then when you look at this in 3D, you can see you already have the start of your first linkage. Do you see that? Am I using that classic 90 degree uh, rig with the angle parameter, right? No way. No, not at all. So I'm using this, right? It becomes very stable. And doesn't it feel natural to have a circle when you want to do a rotation parameter? Doesn't it feel natural 
to have it follow a circle? Because isn't that what's happening, right? Or a piece of a circle, right? An arc? Okay, good. So let's keep going. So let me move it back. Let me go back to that view. All right. Now, this is where it gets super cool. You can stop there if, like, you just had one rotation, or you can keep going. So in this case, we actually have multiple lig lin ligatures, don't we? Multiple links, excuse me, rigid links, I suppose. So then we can actually make the circle big, bigger and catch the next rotation point, and then we can click these and add a spline through point. The reason I'm adding a spline through point instead of this, uh, this line in 3D Snap is if I pick those two points and split spline, spline through point, I know for a fact that those two points are hosting that line, okay? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you've been warned already, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. So you all, are, you all are hanging in there. All right, awesome. Let's keep going. I call this kind of plug and chug, right? Because we're doing live demos, and sometimes it takes a little while, but that's OK. So I'm just going to walk around and do, and do this again. And you'll help me with the last one. Ready? Spline through points. I want to do the last one. So how would I set the last rotation rig on that last circle? What's the first thing I do? What? Set. Very good. Set. And, and here's the thing. Someone came up to me and said, you know what? I, why do I have to keep track of where I'm setting my reference planes where I'm drawing? I have a really hard time doing that. I'm like, well, then you shouldn't be building families. <laughs> if you have no idea what reference plane you're drawing on, don't build families. All right? I said it. So, so you build it there. You go set. OK, cool. Then the next thing we do is, uh, well, we could, yeah, we could, I suppose. Circle, how far does it go? To the next rotation point, let's just say there. What do I do now? Add a point right there to the rotation right there. And then you come here, and you come here, and then you say spline two point. All right? And then we can come here to our 3D view, and we can see that we've got something pretty cool going on. Um, I'm going to add, I always like to add a point, because what's important really are the bones of this, not necessarily all the other quote unquote stuff that you like to put on it. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put this here um, just so we have some, um, something to, to look at. Okay, so that's, that's a little big, but you understand, that's basically the stuff that would be all the hydraulics and all the little like, um, you know, uh, linkages and so on. Okay, so you, you understand. All right, so really cool. So now let's go back to the view and we'll kind of see how this works. So now, what you do is, because you already have these hosted, when this moves, everything else better move. So let's move it to the next point. You see this, what's happening? Did everyone see this? Did everyone see what's happening? I got a question for everyone. Did I nest anything in here? No, look at that. Oh, see how easy that was? See how easy that was? How cool is that? Come on now, how cool is that? Isn't it, isn't it ridiculously simple? Yeah. yeah, of course. All right, but it gets way better. Oh, it gets way better. Watch this, okay? So now that you have this set up, you can actually take this and move it to another position. But do you see this has like a telescoping part to it? Well, because this is already host on reference circles, if you want something to telescope, all you have to do is just, anyone? Increase the diameter or the radius. Super cool, right? Now, everyone's my Revit hero in here, so I don't need to explain how to add parameters and, and so on, right? You got all that, okay? Right? I mean, you can do that. So I'm not going to go over all that. But yes, you would be adding parameters to this to drive it if you wanted to, or you can just grab and pull the line. There's something even better. Watch this. Now that everything is linked together, this is super awesome, okay? Because the developers actually never really, I don't think, quite honestly realized this was going to be the case. But because you're moving like this, technically you are simulating what we call inverse kinematic motion, where you kind of know where the end is, like that bucket, but all the ligatures in between kind of self-calculate themselves, like where they need to be, right? And that's kind of like inverse kinematics, okay? So that's what we're simulating here. But if you take all the nodes and select them all at once, you don't have to pull them one by one. If you wanted to like move this, you can actually do it like this. Is everyone watching this? Does everyone believe this is Revit? <laughs> okay, now, come on now. How cool 
is that? All right. Um, one more thing I want to mention is uh, you can say, yeah, that's great, but you know what? What I'm going to have to do now, now that I have that all built, is I'm going to have to be able to... Let me back up. Now that that's all built, Marcelo, do you see these limits? That won't actually... This actually has the ability to move all the way back on itself, right? And that's not technically what this is supposed to do. Well, if that's the case, where is it supposed to go from? Based on the specifications, it's only allowed to go about to here, okay? Or this one, for example, uh, let's see, let's talk about this one. This one right here is only technically allowed to go to about there, right? Well, what you can do is, is you can actually, what you can do then is, do you see the circle that's, that's driving it, right, this one? All you have to do then is just break it. So from here, wherever, to wherever it needs to go. Do you see that? And then you can delete it. Forget about those formulas, if, then, at, and, ah, forget it, <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right? You got a natural bumper there, it's awesome, all right? Okay, now how cool is that? All right, simple, right? So you say, Marcelo, oh, that's all fine, that's great, but I build my cranes, my construction equipment in the classic family editor. Marcelo, you can't do that in the classic family editor. Oh, you can't? Watch this. Okay, remember that uh, telehandler? Oh. oh, it's getting real now. First time I've ever showed this, ever. Man, <laughs> I'm getting really excited. Okay, remember that picture? This, right? So we got the base. What I'll talk about is the boom, how you rotate it, and then how you can um, basically uh, 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 tell, make it telescope. Isn't that kind of what we did? So let's think about the tools we have in the classic family editor to replicate that motion. It's so awesome. And it's, and it's, come on now, and it's what? Ridic or ridic come on now, Ridi ridiculously simple. Oh my goodness. Watch this. Okay. So let's think about what we were doing with the rotation rig. We were hosting something on a circle, but it was moving about a circle. Well, is there anything in, well, okay, first of all, we don't have, we have circles, but we don't have points in the classic family editor, right? We got those four options. Extrude, blend, revolve, sweep, sweat, blend, right? How are we going to do this? Well, don't you see that point that sweeps or rides along that circle? It's actually making a what kind of motion? Would you say like a revolve motion? Okay, can anyone guess what we're going to use? <laughs> that revolve. Oh, it's so powerful. Watch this. I use this all the time. Okay, ready? So um, I've got this kind of thing here just to kind of show this word where we, the rotation will be for that first boom part. All right, here we go. All you do is go boom, revolve. Okay, set. Pick plane. I'm going to put it here um, just because that's where I want it to rotate about, although you could set up a reference plane or whatever, but I'm just going to show you the concept. Access line, um, let's build it, I suppose, between these midpoints. Can I get it from here? Let me see here. Okay. Whew. There it is. Boom. All right. Good. That's the access line. Boundary line. Where would that be? That would be... Now, I'm kind of eyeballing this, but you would probably be getting it more exact than I am doing it, right? Probably be about there. Okay, now you're like, well, that looks kind of funny, doesn't it? Well, guess what? You can open these things up. It revolves. Look at that. See how you can open up this revolve? Well, guess what? You've got a nice flat face there to reference things to. Okay. So watch this. I'm going to bring in the boom, but just remember that's just stuff. So I'm going to bring in the first one. Here we go. Ready? Boom. And I'm going to host it right here. I think. Do I got to turn it? Probably have to turn it. Okay. There you go. Uh, all right. I know we're going to do a little adjustment here. I think what's well, kind of zero? Kind of de depending on where you place the original... Um, Revolve depends on what face would make it kind of zero. So you can play with that if you want. But anyway, I'm going to move this down because it would be about right here. I mean, I know it's not quite right, but that's the rotation. Okay, 
So do you see that? Okay, so now, guess what? This can be made a parameter, and this can be made a parameter. Do you see that? Yeah. Guess what this could be? That could be zero. It could be 360, 90. And you got these little pool handles. Do you see this? Oh, it gets way better. It gets way better. Now you're like, you know what? I have another piece that telescopes. How am I going to do that? Is there anything, any type of like, element that has like, telescopic ability in these here? Oh, extrusion. I love you, extrusion. Watch this. Okay? Pick plane, boom. Now, do you know why we're hosting it here? Because that is where we're going to be placing our extrusion. Boom. Okay? And do you see that also has a length parameter? You can scoot this one back if you want, because then this could go to zero, right? Okay, but you understand the concept. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and hide this just for a moment. And let's bring in our articulating one. I think it'd be this one. And then we're going to host it right probably there. Are we upside down? We're upside down. Good thing about the classic is it's pretty good about um, kind of readjusting. And then we're going to turn this all on. And then that, that looks pretty good. Okay, so ready? Here we go. Another moment of truth. Ready? This actually rotates, and it also telescopes. Come on now. <laughs> All right? So easy. Oh, ridiculously simple, right? Oh, it gets better. It gets better, right? We got the fork at the end, right? That also needs to rotate. All right, well, bring it in. Here we go. Ready? So here we go. Oh, here we go. Create, because it's rotating, it's going to be a revolve. Revolve, set. Pick plane, boom. I'll put it there. I always do axis line first, just so I can kind of see what's going on. There we go. Boundary line for this one is a little more, not obscure, but because we're kind of out in the weeds in 3D. Some. Out there. It doesn't really matter, only because the revolve is like a, the revolve is like a, um, and we're going to open it up. The revolve is like an element to kind of guide you to host things to it, isn't it? Yeah? Okay. So then we got this and this, okay? Now people ask me, well, you have this thing right here and here. Gosh, what are you going to do with that? I mean, like, what do I do with that? It's just really horrible. What, I mean, what could I do with that? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Boom, fork. All right, here we go. Are we going to get it? Boom. All right. Do we kind of get it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I'm just kind of eyeballing, but like I said, you know, do that, right? And then you could take this, and then you can move this around, too. I think 270 would probably make it zero. Let's see here. Get it? Yeah, like that, right? 270. I don't know if I like 270. Yeah, okay. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. So uh, there's a few other things you can do with this. Like, for example, um, do you see this end angle? You can actually make that a parameter if you wanted to, uh, for example. And, and the reason I want to do that, I'm just going to call it end boom, maybe. End boom. The reason I'm doing that, I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to make this one that drives the, this one, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it um, start, maybe uh, start, start rack or something. You know, that's the rack. Okay. okay. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because do you see typically in these kind of things, because now these parameters are all like together, typically in these telehandlers, when you do something like this, these forks need to remain parallel to the earth, right? Because you don't want to pick up a pallet and have it spill everywhere, right? So do you see how this, this revolve is the angle relative to the planet? This revolve is also relative angle to the planet. So all you have to do if you want to keep this vertical is say, I want my end rack to always be equal to my end boom, and it will always be 
vertical to the ground, or parallel to the ground. How cool is that? Right? Yeah? Okay, cool. I mean, I know the fork. Sometimes you're like, no, Marcelo. Sometimes in the job site, they have to do, okay, sure. <laughs> so, then, so then, you know, add, add another parameter plus, you know, little bit of rotation, right? And then any time, then you just put that little bit of rotation, but it'll always be based off of that relative, which is the plane horizontal to the earth, okay? Now, isn't that ridiculously simple? All right, okay, cool. <sighs> Want to keep going? Gets way better. <laughs> Gets way better. All right, <laughs> what are we doing next? Um, I'm going to, I have a, uh, nah, 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 what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Um, I'm debating on which to go next. Uh, getting really excited here, because you guys are really getting this, and I'm, I suppose we can do this. Um, all right, I suppose we can do this. So we talked about the revolve, right? But we didn't, we kind of left it loose, right, the revolve. I mean, we didn't really constrain the other end. There's a lot of power in constraining the other end of the revolve, right? I mean, we have one face we host to, the other face is just kind of flapping in the wind, right? It's better to kind of take control of that. And what you want to do is you actually want to be able to um, say, you always follow your start by like this much or something. And, and what I mean by that is, if you happen to have like a door and you want to have it swing open or bifolding doors, or in this case, we're going to do a, um, a revolving door, okay? So if we're going to do a revolving door and it's rotation and we're in the classic family editor, the 3D classic family editor, what element am I going to use? What element could I use? Revolve, Revolve right? Are you going to use the reference plane, reference plane, reference plane, angle parameter? Maybe not. I'm not saying go back to your office and change all your families, right? This is kind of something you have in your back pocket, right? And that's the thing, right? See, you're the Revit hero. We're going to make you Revit superheroes. Are you just going to walk to your office like this and you see someone drawing that thing and you just be like, you know, pow, and you just whip out that revolve, right? <laughs> you're like, check this out, right? So that's the thing. By the way, I better do it now. Uh, has anyone downloaded the handout online and read it uh, cover to cover? Okay. <laughs> um, I actually happen to bring hard copies. Um, <laughs> there's a short version that's the handout that you get uh, on the app as well as on, um, uh, as well as on the uh, website that says handout. This is available in the data set. All right. So uh, I'll pass this around. Just make sure I get it back. Thousand pages of of, of, of goodness. And um, it actually turns into a flip book as well. All right, so I will, I will hand these around. Here you go. That's that side. And here you go. Can you go that side? And then, uh, okay, very good. So check that out. Data set, this is all available to you. Um, all right. Where were we? Revolve. Uh, revolving door, we're going to use a revolve. Well, <laughs> isn't that obvious? We've got a revolving door. What are we going to use? We're using Revolve, right? Okay, really cool. So watch this. Um, here we go. Revolve, uh, pick axis, pick. We're going to revolve about the center. We're going to say boundary axis. Now, the boundary is not such a big deal, and we'll explain that in a minute. Okay? But like I said, you can open this up, right? 180. And do you see, basically, what you can do is, do you see this is the start? Come on now, behave. There you go. That's the start, and this is the end. Okay, so that's the start, and that's the end, all right? So what you'll want to do is you'll want to host something to the start of it. So create, uh, set, no, no, set. Here we go. We're going to do the face there. We're going to do a reference plane, and we'll actually just host it right there, okay? And that's where we're going to put our revolving door. Because why? Because this can actually rotate and carry anything with it. Do you see that? You can host a panel onto it, whatever. But what are we going to do with this thing, right? If this thing happened to cross that one, then it would break. So all you have to do is just make two parameters, a start angle. You can just make one called um, uh, start, I suppose. OK? And then you can make one called end. Okay. Make one called end. And you always want the end to follow the start. So you just go over here and you just say, OK, if I want the end to follow the start, then I'll just say, end, you are always equal 
to my start, plus a little bit extra. I like about five degrees. We can kind of debate that a little bit more. But do you see this little piece, right? Now this little piece can actually rock and roll and ride around. And it can do like wild and crazy things like 90 degrees. I know, I know. Come on now, zero degrees. And uh, I don't know, I don't know, no, 5,000 degrees, <laughs> right? Okay, so you get the idea. We're having a bit of fun. But anyway, uh, just to kind of finish this out, you got the idea, right? I don't need to continue, but I will. So here we go. We got uh, extrusion <laughs> set. <laughs> uh, okay, and then I'll just place that there. I'm just building. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm basically building an extrusion, but this would represent like your door panel. Uh, which would happen to be a revolving door. You know, it would have the right material. It would probably be thinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you understand, right? Also, uh, I suppose I'd have to rotate copy this thing, I suppose. I'm not going to make it exact. That's the structural engineer in me doing doors. So forgive me. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? So then when you do this thing, then you can just grab either one of these, and then away you go. Uh, okay. And then um, we could even, uh, I suppose we could even show you how it looks in a project. Let me load this thing in. Do you know why I'm doing this? Do you know why I'm doing this? Because I've been doing, I've been teaching regularly since 2012, and everyone's like, Marcelo, you see you build all these families, but you know, you don't do anything practical. You never, you never put anything in the project environment, Marcelo. And I say, what's a project environment? I'm just kidding. So, so I am doing this to uh, show you. All right, so here we go. Uh, so it is real. I know you do have to put these on sheets eventually. I understand. So here we go, right? You know, what you could do is do this, and you just have yourself a rotation party, right? Oh, I'm going to go 30 degree. Oh, 30. Oh, 45. Oh, yeah. Am I going to get bold and do? Because when you test your old families, you're like, should I do one? <laughs> but now you're like, yeah, you stand up tall, and you're like, I'm doing zero. How cool is that? All right. Thank you. So uh, between all that, um, we're really starting to understand that there's really a whole lot you can do, right? Just with the revolve and the extrude. And then with the, if you're in the adaptive component environment, with the host rotate and build circle, right? Okay? But it gets even better. It gets even better. Okay. It just, I, you've on, we've only just begun to scratch the surface of this potential. So I've got another example here. Are there any questions? I kind of feel like I'm doing all the talking up here. <laughs> Go for it. I'm listening to you. Oh, uh, the question was, <laughs> yeah, uh, I will, I will uh, I'll shorten your question. The question was, uh, um, when you put reference planes, and, when you're in the classic family editor and you put reference planes and then you assign them, you can get those as pool handles as long as they're linear dimensions. Why can't you get pool handles for angular dimensions? That's an off topic for this class. Okay, we'll talk later. But you do get pool handles in the family environment if you use revolves. So, you know, let that make you feel a little comfortable. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay, where do we go? Um, I suppose we better do this now. Uh, okay, so, so the idea is, you know what, Marcelo, that's great. But I model all my stuff in 2D detail components. How do I make 2D detail components rotate? How do I do that in 2D detail components? So I, I thought about this, and I'm like, yeah, it's, you're right. <laughs> How do you do that in 2D detail components? So I decided to come up with a fun example uh, here to kind of show you this. And, uh, and <laughs> so really, the first step is, this is a 2D detail component. But the first step, really, is just to go ahead and build yourself a ATST detail component, OK? <laughs> Everyone just go out and do it, all right? And then I'll show you actually how to animate this thing, okay? It's 
really cool. So there's no 3D button here, right? There's no rotation, but there is a lot of cool things in the in the 2D detail component that, uh, that, it, uh, that you might miss. One is the bones. How do you set up bones for the inverse kinematic motion? It's really easy. All you do is take reference lines, because it's 2D, right? So, so you know what reference plane you're drawing on? Uh, uh. <sighs> there are different work planes that you can draw on in the 2D environment, and you've got to be very careful of it. But in there lies the beauty of what we're going to do. Okay? We're laying down reference planes, so don't assume it's all going to be put on one reference line. I mean, one work plane that will never change. That is not true. But what you do is you can build your bones just like this, right? I mean, from joint to joint. Sorry, I'm not an ATST anatomy expert, but I'm sure some of you in here are. Uh, so <laughs> please, <laughs> please be gentle with me uh, on this. Uh, but here's the thing, when you click, when you, first you have to build something, and then you can reassign it to a work plane. It's really cool. So the bones, what you can do is you can start with the feet and say, edit work plane, and you can say, pick plane, and you can assign it to this one. Then you just go to this bone, and you just kind of plug and chug, say, work plane, and then you assign it to this one. And then you work, you're basically, what you're doing is you're working your way back to the source of the movement. And in that case would be like this drivetrain, right? I'm sorry if I didn't call that out right. And then basically, do you see here? You can actually, we're just talking about the bones. Do you see how it's actually moving at all relative now? Super cool, right? Yeah, but you're like, yeah, but I want all this to move. So easy, watch this. All you have to do is take all the other stuff and then just do it again. Edit work plane and then place it on the bone. So it's like first you build the bones and then you take the muscles and the skin and then put it onto the associated bone. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Now, I'm not going to be super accurate here because I don't have a lot of time. Uh, but, um, but basically, you have to select all these uh, hatch patterns, uh, uh, excuse me, um, uh, regions, and then assign them to the appropriate bone. How come that didn't work? Oh, so for example, do you see what we're doing? You see that? That's what we're doing. Oh, there's a little lag there. Huh. How cool is that, everyone? Let's get going. How cool is that? Yeah? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, I geek out about this stuff hardcore. Oh my goodness. All right, uh, let's see here. Work plane. There we go. Uh, next would be this one. Suppose we'll get that little thing too. And then, by the way, this is all available in the data set, so you can kind of have it and play with it. And then, take plane. I think we're here. I think I do have to do this one. I suppose I should. Ah, I suppose I should. I'll do this one too. Uh, let's see, where's my minus? Okay, here we go. <sighs> okay, okay, one more, one more. Hang in with me. One more. And then we go reference plane, and then we pick the bone, right? Cool. Ah, oh. <laughs> so now watch. <laughs> so now you can actually move this accordingly. It's so cool. Oh my goodness. That's right, I don't know how this thing... Oh, we lost that one, but I guess that's okay. You understand what we're doing, right? I didn't get that one, but that's okay. And I know you're going to argue with me, like, there is no way it would move like that. I understand, but, you know. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? How cool? Wait, well, let me get rid of this, all right? Isn't that cool? How cool is that? That's how you move 2D detail components. All right, so, thank you. Uh, you can put dimensions between them. You know, have, have yourself a party about that stuff, right? I, uh, you know, we're, we're super here. We're rabbit heroes in here, so... So we, um, you, don't need, you don't need me to go over that. 2D detail components. Man, we're on a roll. Let me just keep going. Wow. Wow, we're doing good on time. Okay. Um, great. Let me keep going. Um, all right. Well, let's keep going. Okay, so what's the problem with 2D detail components? Now we're getting really theoretical, crazy wild. What's the problem with 2D detail components? They're 2D. <laughs> so that really bothered me. And I'm like, you know, what if you want to like rotate it out of plane? You can't do that, or can you? What about this? I'll show you really quick. Never showed this to anyone at Odyssey University. Super awesome stuff, right? So you're like, yeah, you know, but my detail component every once in a while needs to actually rotate out of plane because the way we see it in the view, 
we actually do that with some structural beams, you know, like if it's kind of coming out at an angle, our detail component needs to actually rotate out based on that cut plane perpendicular, right? So all you do is you, you can do stuff like this, ready? And you can actually get your pull handles and you can actually make it rotate in 2D. Ooh, how do you do that? Cool stuff. I love this. Oh my goodness. Watch it. It's so ridiculously simple, right? If I edit this family, all it is is just uh, you have some preset positions like, you know, 0, 15, 20, 25, 30, kind of how it's going to look, right? Uh, and then you can actually regenerate this stuff using like Dynamo or whatever. Like you have a 3D component, you can rotate it and then capture it, build the hatch pattern, capture it, build the hatch pattern. It's really easy to do. And then just based on um, I just set it up to this reference plane with some equations. I'm not going to go into this too detailed because you are all super awesome Revit users. Basically, any time that threshold passes one of these criteria, then it turns one on and then turn, turns, it turns one on and then it turns the other one, all the rest off. Easy, right? Yeah, it's so easy. Yeah, it's super easy. Okay, you want to take a... Maybe I should show the equation, you can take a screenshot of that. But yeah, it's so easy, really simple. So 2D detail components don't have to be plagued with being 2D, okay? There it is, boom. Hashtag, 2D detail components don't have to move in 2D. Got it? <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're rocking and rolling now. Any questions? Okay. We're rocking and rolling. Got another one for you. I can go, I can go all day. <laughs> all right. Um, let's talk about another adaptive component. Uh, let's talk about this case, window washing davits. Oh, I love window washing davits. What is a window washing davit? Window washing davit is a, you know, you got that thing on top of a building that has to hold the, the, um, the chair, yeah, that someone climbs into that, you know, needs to operate. And it's actually pulled by a cable, okay? So I'm going to show you how to actually simulate cable motion. And cable motion is important because it wheels in, but it also wheels out, right? So in a sense, in a sense the cha length changes, right? But because it's in tension all the time, or uh, should be, uh, <laughs> Then, then it's allowed to actually move freely about its kind of like rotation point or its spool point, right? Be able to suck in and move out. So how do you, can you simulate motion that actually allowed to actually shorten and lengthen, but also move at any point along the plane at which that cable needs to be pulled out of, all right? We'll talk about when it's out of plane, but let's talk about when it's in plane. Everyone got it? You know what I'm going to say, right? I won't, I won't, I know I've been stressing it too much, so I won't say it anymore. But, um, but basically here, I already had this built for you, and you can have this if you like. This is actually two spec. So I'm going to say this is kind of the easy part now, right? I mean, after you, after you built that lift, right, something like this with just a standard static shaft, vertical shaft and, and, and horizontal shaft that rotates only about one you're like, this has one rotation point? <laughs> that's so easy, right? <laughs> and that's what's going to happen at work. You're going to go back and you're going to be a superhero and you're gonna, they're going to say to you, I've got this family and, you know, it's got these two armatures and they kind of they do like this and then these kind of like rotate and then they kind of like, they kind of like telescope and it also needs to be in the traditional family editor and it's really difficult to do and you just stand there like this. And they're like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You're like, I'm waiting for the difficult part, right? Because <laughs> it's so easy. You just think about what plane you're in, rotate translation. That's really all it is. Okay, so, so this is pretty simple stuff. I won't get into too much detail about it. Although, although this point um, does drive like this little this little uh, carriage, right, that then the, the cable would spool out of, you understand? I have this family pretty much complete. All we're going to do is build the cable. Okay, so watch how easy this is. So I have the, I have the I'm going to isolate that point, and then I'm going to do like this. Because I was thinking, you know what? I could build a circle. I could build a circle. 
and I could put a point on the circle, right? And I could use the trick that I used before, where I grab this, and I grab this point, which is the one that's driving that carriage. Okay, everyone with me? And then I can do spline two points. And then this cable is allowed to move like this. And I could change this diameter, and it could do like that. But that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of old school. <laughs> right? That was so 15 minutes ago. Uh, what you could do now uh, is you can actually take this thing, uh, let me make it a reference line, and then uh, you can create a, pl a surface out of it, okay? Let me show you what I mean. And then basically cable movement, instead of hosting it onto a curve, you can also host a point onto a surface. Oh, I just opened a whole new world to everyone. Everything we were doing was like linear, like point on a curve, right? Just think about what you can do with a point on a surface. Oh, it's crazy awesome, right? So you can just say pick new host, boom, and then now you have this in here, right? I won't kind of bore you with the details, but you can pick that and pick that and pick that, and you can kind of swing it all around. And then do you see this? Isn't this kind of like the, let me hide this for dramatic effect. Isn't this the cable movement that you would want? I mean, you can make this longer, but isn't that what a cable would need to be doing? Right, like that? I mean, you can set parameters to this, like UV coordinates as well, and then you can just have yourself a, 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 you can have yourself a cable party, all right? How cool is that? <laughs> Gets better. Now that you have opened your eyes to the world of 2D, I mean, surface hosting, this is actually hosting in one plane, right? Well, what if you have ball joint motion? Not planar motion. What if you have ball joint motion, right? Sphere, right? Oh, sphere. But this would be a sphere. <sighs> Come on, anyone? What would I do instead of a sphere? I would do a close no. hemisphere, right? Oh, awesome. OK, watch this. So I thought I'd bring the old girl out of retirement to show you this. Has anyone seen the Revit cow? Come on, everybody. She's back out of retirement. The Revit Cow. The Revit Cow, everyone. Oh, there she is. Oh. Hello, old friend. So I'm going to show you how to do ball joint motion, and we're going to use to simulate a cow's head movement, because that's how it pretty much would move, right? I mean, it wouldn't twist its head with, right? So let's, it's, it is ridiculously simple. OK, watch this. So all you do, all you have to do is build a cow and build a... <laughs> All right. <laughs> and a sphere. <laughs> uh, but the really cool thing about a sphere and a revolve... So uh, the massing environment also has a revolve. But when you cut a revolve down instead of 0 to 360, uh, you can make a hemisphere, so I think I can turn this to 180. Yeah, there we go. See that? That's the hemisphere. Now, do you see this point? This point drives the cow's head. So all I need to do is actually host that onto the hemisphere. And then beautiful things happen. Oh my goodness, beautiful things happen. Watch this. See? That's how a head of a cow moves. How cool is that? Oh, come on now, how cool is that? Oh, yeah. So um, a lot of things, quite honestly, in, in nature and in, um, I mean, how far do you want to take this? I mean, if you want to talk about ball joint movement, um, a lot of things, let me go on my ball joint mo movement rant. A lot of things in nature, um, 
a lot of mechanics don't have multiple joints that are balls. Like, this is a ball joint, that's a ball joint, that does a ball joint, because you typically have a lot of instabilities. Um, like, so in your arm, you have this as a ball joint, but this is actually a, um, a planar uh, joint, right? And then this is also a planar joint. I mean, you got the radial bone to kind of help you a little bit in there, but do you understand what I'm saying? So, so taking this out to inverse kinematics and multiple joints that are balls, you typically don't have that unless you have like, a, like an action figure, you know, or something like that, a toy. But I mean, you could, you know, you, I mean, I, because here's the, I'm bringing this up, because someone asked me, well, can you do inverse kinematic with ball joints? Sure you can, but I mean, just kind of think about on a practical level, what would it be? And yes, I said practical, because I mean, it's really not that, but I can think of one example that actually did kind of simulate this. So you can take a sphere and, a, and you can set reference plane and another sphere, perhaps there. You can do that, I suppose. Let me see. Let me see if I can get it. Uh, kind of hard to see now. Okay. Let's see if I can get it. Is that it? There you go. I guess it's about there. Okay. So that's, I guess that's pretty good. Something like that, right? And then just be 180, like that, right? Does this remind you of any droid you happen to see in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away, right? You know, right? Little, little happy BB-8, right? Kind of doing his thing, right? Where, you know, you tell him sad things and his head drops and so on. But this is, you know, this is, this is kind of things you can do and, and, you know, have a lot of fun with it. But, but uh, I mean, really, from a practical standpoint, you don't have it. But, I mean, if you wanted to keep going with something like this, uh, you certainly could. I mean, then you can just add another point, right, like this, and then you can connect these two points up, right, and then so on. And you can keep moving and have, like, multiple ball joints. So you understand you could do multiple ball joints if you want, or you can just cute, keep cute little BB-8, you know, or you can just do movements of cow heads or, 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 or shoulders or, or whatever you want, okay? So how cool is that, everyone? So I would honestly say now that we've come to a point where there's pretty much nothing that's stopping you from creating amazing things inside of Revit with the family editor, right? They're like, well, it's a 2D detail component. So, well, it's going to be in the 3D classical environment. So, bring it on, right? Because I'm going to say now that everyone here, you're my Revit superheroes. Come on now, give it up. And I've got a special gift for everyone. I've got... I've got ribbons for everyone in here, and it says Revit Superhero. <laughs> All right, so what you do is when you leave here, we're not done yet, but you know what you can do when you, like, when you leave here? Oh, where's my thing here? You get your, uh, someone, okay, here we go, like this, right? Someone give me their, I got it here. Okay, so what you do is you put this on, right? And you're like, you get this on here, okay? And uh, I'll give you extras if you want to, you know, make more, put more on here, you know, like, maybe you want to, you know, make a, you can like, you know, like, you can like make a cape, you know, and like, like this, and you'll be like, hey, how was that class? Oh, it's pretty good, you know, and you can stand like this, you know, and you'd be like, hey, you know, stand by a fan and let it, you know, so have yourself fun with it, but I'll hand these out. Could you two help me do this? Just grab them right there, and we'll pass these out, and then I'll be around at the end of the session, and I'll hand out like extras here. You deal with it, okay? Thank you. Okay, so, pretty cool, huh? Yeah, all right. Are there any questions? You know what? I have a little time. Do you want to see anything like fun? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this, but you're like, oh, okay. Encore? Yeah. All right. Encore. How many people? <sighs> How many people want to see me build this in three minutes? <laughs> All right. Can you cue some music, please? Anything. I wasn't planning on this, but we're doing awesome on time. Come on, cue it up. All right, so what do you do with any kind of mechanical equipment? You go out, you get yourself, go to the manufacturer and get yourself some blueprints. Come on, turn it up. There we go. All right?
Get yourself some blueprints. Watch everything I taught you today. And enjoy. Ready? Here we go. All right, are there any questions? Yes? What was the animator that you used at the beginning? The animator? Yeah. That little video you made, like what? Oh, how did we make, the, um, that was uh, actually, that was, uh, the, the animation, the question was, what's the animation that we used to do the, um, the, the, the family, the lift? Uh, that uh, I built inside of Revit, and then I sent it to 3ds Max, and I rigged it up and then I built it. But I, I suppose what I could have done was uh, built it inside of Revit, assigned the rigs to it, uh, and then uh, animated it using, um, using Dynamo. I suppose I could have, I could have done that. Uh, any other questions? Yes? Uh, lips, how, any, any functionality with the ellipses? The, <laughs> the question was, is there any functionality with ellipses? Absolutely. And ellipsoids? Absolutely. Or surfaces? Absolutely. Or any curve? Absolutely. Right? So you can just go ahead and self and have yourself a great old time. Okay, everyone. I want everyone to go out there, do awesome things. You're my Revit superheroes. Thank you. Okay, cue music. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>